So this is a video that I've been dying to make because this is a video that I have been dying to talk about and make and before we get into it, let's talk about Dakota. Dakota is my golden retriever German Shepherd mix as you see here. She's in the background quiet. However, you guys are hearing the sounds of her chewing because she is eating basically like um, frozen but a little bit thawed out kibble with water in it. When I tell you, if you're looking for a way to keep your dogs busy, freeze their food and get the Kongs. Always monitor them and like try to be safe and everything, but get the Kongs, okay? Like I wish somebody would have encouraged me even more to get Kongs when I first got dogs. Kongs are like your best friend or really just like frozen treats things like that like that really occupies them like if you need to do something around the house and you just kind of like need the space but you don't want to put them in the crate anyways let's get into the show he ever loves tv yes i made a theme song so that i can talk about all my favorite shows oh yeah and this is just your disclaimer that this is not me talking about any of the actors themselves, but more so their characters. Please do not attack me in the comments. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, even those who disagree with me. But let's keep it friendly. All right, let's get started with the show. Lately, I have just been binging shows and trying to get some video ideas together. I'm going back to my roots. And one of the shows that I love the most, of course, is Gilmore Girls. And so, of course, if I hear a show that's about like a mother or daughter trying to navigate life, like, yes, like it's calling my name. So I started watching Ginny and Georgia and I love this show. Today, I want to try to gather like together all the things that I've been thinking about it because there are just so many connections that this show has with Gilmore Girls. And it's just so much to talk about with it because I feel like this show, both shows are just so layered and there's just so many ways to look at things. And that's why often I have to remind myself like, perception is not really always reality like understanding that everybody has a different view of things and that's okay so we're gonna get into some very touchy things today this is where i would like to initiate a trigger warning for those watching there will be some essay mentions self-harm mentions just a lot of things that may not make people the most comfortable so if you have to click off the video i really recommend doing that now jenny and georgia is a show that if you think about it it's kind of like Gilmore Girls but with a dark twist to it but it's also similar in Gilmore Girls in the way that they kind of flip back and forth between a harsher world versus almost what would seem like a perfect world because Georgia is often like flashing back and forth like to her childhood her past which is very dark like kind of like the Gilmore Girls like that's a harsher world that's where like a lot of deeper conversations are had especially regarding trauma and things like that. And then Lorelai goes to Stars Hollow and Georgia goes to the town that she's living in, which I cannot remember the name right now, and everything seems all right again. But there's still that darkness that's kind of lingering in the show. Both characters cannot seem to escape their past and evolve from it. That's one of the main things, one of them at least, that I see when I watch Jenny and Georgia after being such a hardcore Gilmore Girls fan for years now. I also think that we can look at how even society treats the two different mothers that aren't actually different at all, if you think about it. And the fight between Ginny and Georgia reminds you a lot of the fight between Lorelai and Rory in episode one. Ginny rides a motorcycle right before their fight. Ginny and Georgia take a similar like mother-daughter theme here. The junk food eating, the references, Georgia jumping into bed with Jenny, kind of like Lorelai has jumped into bed with Rory. Even some of Georgia's hairstyles kind of mimic Lorelai's. I know people hate Jenny, but I don't completely hate her. Jenny looks at Georgia the way that Georgia sees her mom. Joe and Georgia's chemistry mocks Luke and Lorelai, but I think everybody sees that if you're already a fan of Gilmore Girls. One of the funny things though is that they don't actually keep coffee in the house, but I still feel like that's some kind of undertone like with a link like wink, wink, wink at Gilmore Girls. You know what I mean? I actually like Max and I love what they do with her character and how much depth they give her. She's not just weird girl she actually has feelings and aspirations and dreams the actress that plays georgia has a good way of acting but then acting like she's acting when she's in the other world it's almost like a wink to the audience but it feels effortless zion's parents being just like emily and richard i think that it's very 
important to note that even though we're seeing everything that Georgia has gone through, Jenny is not able to see it. Like she, like we're literally seeing a glimpse into her past as it happened versus Georgia. I mean, you got to think about it. Like when your parents tell you about their childhood, you didn't actually experience it when they were telling like their childhood stories. Your perception of it is a lot more probably dialed down than how it actually happened or it might be more exaggerated than how things actually happen in their life. So Jenny is not just being a brat. Like, I don't think that's really what it is. I think that she just doesn't know everything. Like she has a limited perception of what has actually happened that made Georgia the way that she is. And we get to see that as an audience but Jenny doesn't see it. Just in general, like even though like sometimes, yes, she can be a little snobby, Antonia Gentry does a very good job at portraying a character that doesn't know everything. Jenny just acts like a girl who really doesn't know everything. I think the similarities between Gilmore Girls and Jenny and Georgia are intentional because a lot of scenes just line up way too closely with scenes that happened in Gilmore Girls. There are even character translations for almost every character that's in Gilmore Girls. Georgia is Lorelai, Jenny is Rory, I feel like Jenny is more like, and like in season one, it's almost as if the Gilmore Girls writers took Rory in that one episode and then made her like that for the whole season. Like that's how Jenny acts. She acts like Rory did in episode one. Joe is Luke, Zion is Christopher, Paul is Max, Abby is like a modern day Paris to me with how like dry and standoffish she can be. Even Maxine has hints of like Paris in how dedicated she is to school, but really I can also say she has hints of Lane in her as well with her bubbly personality. Cynthia is Taylor. Marcus is Jess. Hunter is Dean, but like a much healthier version of Dean. It's like Gilmore Girls, but just with a lot more depth. And if you're a fan of Gilmore Girls and you want some of those feels, this is definitely a show that I would recommend. The connection that I'm seeing with the fight that happens between Ginny and Georgia, and then right after that, like her on the motorcycle, like, come on, like everybody knows the famous line. Does he have a motorcycle? Because if you're gonna throw your life away, he better have a motorcycle. Like, come on, like everybody knows that line. So it's just very convenient that, it, and it's not about Jenny getting on the back of some guy's motorcycle, like behind him or anything, like she's riding on her own. So of course, like as a Gilmore Girls fan, like I think that that's a link to Gilmore Girls. I feel like that's a wink to Gilmore Girls fans. And again, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like I don't, I don't actually talk to anybody who makes this show. So don't take what I'm saying like as the Bible or anything, but I just think it's interesting. I think it's very interesting, like how they've given this new generation like Gilmore Girls, but in a way that is easily translated to the newer generation. If that was the intention, I feel like that's really, really cool. Marcus does the hand thing that Jess does a lot. Like Jess does this thing. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed, but like whenever um, you see it, especially in this scene right here, when he's walking out of Luke's diner, he does that little thing with his hand and Marcus does the same thing, almost like in the same way. And while we're on the subject of Marcus and Jenny, I actually did not like them the first season that much. I don't know, like a lot about it. Like I didn't really warm up to them until I think probably when he got into the accident and then I was like, oh, okay. I actually do like care about this character and I actually kind of want them to get together. I do feel like Marcus is emotionally immature in a lot of ways, but I mean, they're like, what are they like 16? That's pretty much expected. It's a really weird moment when you watch how Bria tries to be friends with Jenny and it just is so the disconnect between them is so apparent and it's almost like and I could be very very wrong this is just me sharing my thoughts but it almost is like she looks at her and she hangs out with all of these different um friends that are not black and it just is a very, like, I don't know for me, like, I don't know if maybe I'm over exaggerating it, but it just felt like such a disconnect in the cultures because she spent, she has spent a lot more time around white people than around her own people. And it's absolutely devastating, you know, and I think that that's the whole point for us to see that Jenny is really struggling and hanging on by a thread to understand her identity like it just feels like a complete identity crisis everything is about her identity even like the way that her hair changes from curly to straight the more and more she's hanging around those girls even her outfit changes like you can tell like everything is changing for her and she's just trying to figure out who she is and if you listen to Jenny a lot she talks about how she's never had friends this is her first experience having friends I think that we need to kind of take that 
more into consideration when watching this character is that like there is a whole backstory here and there is a deeper story here about a girl who just simply feels unwanted and doesn't feel a sense of belonging anywhere. Like that's what it's really stemming from. Like all of her anger and all of the the things that she does is kind of like rude and mean. Yes, it's wrong, but this, again, this is one of those times where I'm going to tell you, like, two things can definitely be true at the same time. Yes, Jenny can be a total a-hole to her mom, and yes, Georgia's parenting can be based off of her experiences, but that doesn't always make it right. And yes, Jenny can be experiencing an identity crisis, and she can still be an a-hole to her mom. You know what I mean? Like, it can all still kind of circle back and go all hand in hand. But it's important to remember that this is a young girl who has been through a lot. Jenny often voices the longing for stability, which she has not had most of her life. And then towards the end of the season, she discovers that her mom unalived her stepdad because she feared that he might try to do more than just touch her thigh. And I feel like that's why Georgia is allowed to speak to so many people and why so many people love the character of Georgia because it almost feels like instinct. Like just to think about what you would do and the, I think that's the undertone and why people show so much more love towards Georgia. Let's talk about season two. Season two feels fresh and polished. The acting is just still so good. Georgia is responding to Jenny running away the same way that Lorelai did when Rory ran away. In episode one of season two, their Twinkie conversation, it reminds me of Lorelai and Rory's obsession with Twinkies. We learn a lot about Jenny feeling out of control and I love that they focus so much more on Jenny's mental health and her self-harm. It seems like we're looking at things more through Jenny's eyes now. I have a lot to say about season two. I want to say yes to Paul saving the day and still sticking by Georgia's side. And yikes to it ending with Georgia going to prison. Antonia Gentry killed it this season. Season two is sadder, but they really did what needed to be done as far as representation for mental health issues and just diving more into like, how it must feel for Jenny struggling with her identity. I empathized with Jenny a lot more this season and I found myself having a lot more moments like understanding her and Georgia's feelings all at the same time. I love how evolved the stories feel. They go deeper into Marcus and his depression, which is not something that I've seen explored much in teen drama shows or any other shows like this. I feel like mental health was really covered beautifully in this show. Definitely mentioned sometimes where maybe you thought it wasn't, but for the most part, I feel like, especially because this is such a new thing that shows are now beginning to talk about. I think they did a wonderful job and I love the way they executed it. I love how you could see him disassociating. You could see the decline in his emotions and his descent into depression. I think that Georgia having that conversation with him is what really kicked it off because it just made him feel like, oh, like that's how the world sees me. The world sees me as like this placeholder but nothing serious like I think it just made him have his own identity crisis I think a lot of this season was about identity like who you are as a person who these characters are as people how they fit into this world their wants their needs their struggles even the way that they touch on Cynthia and her husband like going through that whole situation there they really harped on humanizing the characters this season and I think that this was an amazing way to do it I want to really touch on the scene about Jenny and her self-harm and Georgia discovering that. I was really wondering that in season one, were they gonna actually talk about her self-harm more? Because it seems like they briefly introduced it to us and told us that this is something that she's struggling with, but then it feels like it didn't really go anywhere. And I almost felt like it was gonna be kind of like Blair's eating disorder in Gossip Girl, like where it was a storyline that started but just never finished, it just became a plot hole. I think that what really is standing out to me about the self-harm scene is that they don't actually show us the scars. And I think um, for a lot of reasons, I just feel like that was a really good move because they still got the message across. Like they executed it in a way that was like that this is something that is very serious and very intense. One of the important things that I've learned about writing is showing, not telling, which is something that I think plays a large role into how people perceive Georgia versus how they see Lorelai, which is something I'm going to get into later, not now. But that was a way that they actually showed us, but not showing the scars, showing us that this is a situation that is very, very sad. What's really heartbreaking for me is hearing Georgia say, Why would you 
do that to yourself. And all that, like, the, I'm not gonna lie, that really makes me tear up because it really puts it in perspective. Kind of like what I feel like 13 Reasons Why wanted to do with their show, which they wanted to talk about people who struggle with depression and all that kind of stuff. But it was executed in a very different way that just... It just didn't come across the same. How Jenny is coping with her problems or how she was coping with her problems at this point is like Georgia's worst nightmare. And all she really wants is for her daughter to be happy, even if the ways that she's trying to get her there are really messed up. Season two felt more real and focused. It centered more around Georgia as a mother, but also how her parenting has affected Jenny's behavior. We hear through dialogue between Jenny and her friends that just like the audience did in the past season, her friends also think that the way that Georgia parents Jenny is okay and far better than their own parenting. This season lets us see more of why Jenny feels the way she does, and it's so complicated because we also understand why Georgia parents the way that she does. They also discuss the struggle that Jenny has with her identity being both black and white, feeling torn between two cultures. I love seeing Zion like a lot more involved this season. It's nice to see him trying to do the best he can to help Jenny get help for her self-harm. My favorite thing about Jenny and therapy is how her therapist advocates for her and that her therapist is someone who looks like her. Having a therapist with a similar ethnic or cultural background is extremely helpful when trying to seek help because getting help when you need it is a task on its own and then trying to be vulnerable is just another step. The closest way to get there is by talking to someone that you feel understands you. Season two sounds to me like they actually heard the audience's concerns. It sounds like they listened to their younger actors and people who are actually living as a young person today. The writing is so Fresh. They toned Maxine down this season and gave her so much more depth. She feels extremely relatable to me and a lot more human. They bring her beyond comic relief and giving her insecurities and showing us her beyond being a bouncing, raging ADHD stereotype. I love the actress that plays Maxine in Degrassi. I remember her being very good in that. Something to note also is the dynamic between Georgia and Austin. Austin is often ignored whereas Jenny is always more in the spotlight, which is also kind of understandable because, I mean, he's a lot younger and I do like that they try to give him storylines still, but it's like when there's a really dark show like this, it's kind of harder to give younger actors plot, in my opinion. So what really was compelling for me is that I wanted to try to answer the question for myself, even though like I'm still kind of struggling with it, and I would love if you guys shared your own thoughts in the comment section. One of the main questions I asked myself was, why does the audience empathize with Georgia and not Lorelai? And the answer I came up with was, we empathize with Georgia more because of how they show us the hardships of single mom parenting. We see her missing important holidays in Jenny's youth to pay bills. We're constantly shown, not just told, about how Georgia struggled and we see that her drive is centered around taking care of her daughter and by extension taking care of both her children. Georgia allows those with maternal instinct to embrace their dark fantasies about what they would do to protect their children. We don't question if Georgia wants the best for Jenny as much as we question how far would she go to protect her children. And I understand that the trust had been severed between Jenny and Georgia because Georgia kept things from her, but in a lot of ways, Georgia was right. You already see that the way that Jenny handled that piece of information, like she didn't handle it well. It wasn't like she was introduced to all these things and found out all these things about her mother and then she was completely calm and she trusted in her mother completely. Like you, in the beginning of season two, you just see her constantly being defiant. And I, like I said, I understand why she's doing it. I understand that she doesn't understand all the pieces of the puzzle. Even with the little bit of information that she does have, she can't handle it. So it's like, why would Georgia tell her more? And Georgia is trying, even though she's not always successful at it, she's trying to maintain just a little bit of innocence for her children and not introduce them to the dark parts of the world. And I think that's what she was trying to express to Jenny in the car. Oh my goodness, guys. This is why I had such a hard time with like trying to see whose side I was on in a lot of their arguments and a lot of their conflict because I'm very aware that both of them have limited access to the full story because one of them is lying to the other or not telling the entire story to the other. Like even Jenny telling Marcus about her unaliving someone, like we know that 
Marcus more than likely probably will never say anything about it, but Jenny's just kind of throwing out information to people that she feels that she can trust. And yes, I know she did not tell the detective anything, but what if Marcus was like some kind of undercover like detective? Georgia was right when she said that Jenny can't be trusted because Jenny is running off of emotions. Everything that she's doing is fueled by her emotions. She feels like her mom is a bad person. She feels like her mom is a bad person. So she feels like she shouldn't associate herself with her. She feels like her mom is a bad person. So she's skipping school. You know, like it's not like she's handling any of this information well. And it was information that Georgia was purposely trying to keep Jenny out of. For a lot of people, that's their frustration with Lorelai because they feel like Lorelai puts Rory in adult situations when she shouldn't be. And I don't think that's all the way true because especially in season one, when it came to the subject of them talking about Max and things like that, Lorelai does try to keep her out of it. And I know that Lorelai sometimes lets her know things that are going on and talks to her like a little bit more mature. But I feel like these are two situations like you can look at this like, oh, like it's terrible that Lorelai does that. Or you can kind of look at it like, okay, this is almost like a case study because you have one situation where a parent is more willing to tell their child stuff. But I think if Lorelai would have off someone, I don't think she would have told Rory. I mean, I don't know if she would have told Rory, honestly, but I don't think she would have told Rory. Um, but So this is a much darker situation. And you already see that even when the parent in this situation is keeping the child out of the drama, The child is still finding a way in. It's not just about Rory being way too involved in in adult business. I feel like Rory would have been in that business anyway because of the dynamic between a single mother and her only child. Their bond is just that strong. You can even see that with Jenny and Georgia because Jenny feels extremely connected to Georgia even though she tries to escape it. And another question I had for myself was like, is Georgia a narcissist? And I believe that she does have narcissistic tendencies. I don't this is one of those cases again where I kind of line her up with Lorelai and I feel like they both are a product of their environment and while that is not an excuse to never get help it still is something to factor in when thinking about why they are the way they are and that also kind of goes into my whole thing about like and I know I talk about this so much on here but I just want to I keep like finding more and more stuff to say about it I think that's why I have kind of an issue with TikTok in a way because I feel like The only way to go viral is to have an out of context moment. And then it's like people misunderstand that. And a lot of people don't want to do further research on the videos they see, which I can understand because, you know, you kind of feel like it should have told you all you needed to know in that moment. But without the context of things, it doesn't allow us to empathize with people and understand people and treat people with respect and like look at each other like actual humans instead of being so critical and so harsh on each other even ourselves so that's what I have to say about that and I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more comment that down below comment your thoughts and let me know what you think do you think that Georgia is a narcissist I'm sure a lot of people will I actually honestly I see more people saying that that she's not or saying great things about Georgia but then they trash Lorelai every single chance that they get and it's just like I just I feel like people just look at Lorelai and I feel like that's something to say about humanity itself that people feel like because people have money it must mean that they're happy like we have been fooled by capitalism to believe that having money is the key to all happiness and it's amazing because then you have people like Robin Williams a great talent you know people that were had money had wealth had everything that they needed and they're still not happy so obviously that's not the key to happiness but if like the amount of people unaliving themselves even after they've made money and everything like if that does not show you that money is not the key to happiness, I don't know what will. So, um, wow, that got really deep. Anyway, so (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed this video and, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, stay safe. I love you and bye.